Marie Holmes. I've been with Pure Romance for eight and a half fabulous years, and I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Cindy Faulkner. I am from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I've been with Pure Romance ten and a half phenomenal years. Hey ladies, my name is Corinne Kinscherf and I have been a Pyramids consultant about seven and a half years and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. Um, what I'd love for you all to share is what were you doing before you joined Pure Romance? Um, Andrea? Sure, I was actually working for an ad agency in Milwaukee. Loved my job, was making great money, but never really wanted to be there. As I was showing up to work late, uh, as soon as it was 4.45, I was packed up, ready to walk out the door. Cindy, what were you doing? I was working full-time as a registered nurse here in Chattanooga. Cool. And Corinne? I worked for a luxury real estate firm here in Atlanta, and I was their marketing manager for their new homes division. Awesome. Um, how did you all get introduced to Pure Romance? I actually heard a commercial on the radio driving home from that J-O-B one day and I was like, oh, sex toys on the radio really sparked my interest. And uh, so I went online and we didn't even have Google back then, but went online and researched Pure Romance and was just instantly impressed by how classy this company was. Very cool. Cindy. Um, well, I'll try to keep this short. <laughs> um, I had never heard of Pure Romance or really anything like it. Um, I was, um, at the time, going through a divorce, and uh, one of the nurses that I worked with, I, I was 31, I'd never had an orgasm. So my, one of the nurses I worked with said, you know, Cindy, why don't you get a vibrator and get her done? And I'm like, oh, I can't do that, I'm a Baptist. So long story short, I uh, called my sister and was, I guess, wanting her permission to get a vibrator. And she was the one that said, have you heard of those parties? And I was like, no, what parties? So long story short, she had a <clears throat> heard of the parties and never been to a party herself, but told me about a really great consultant. And um, she talked me into hosting a party. And um, yeah, I was scared to death, but I did it. Corinne, how did you learn about Pure Romance? Um, I learned about Pure Romance because uh, a girlfriend that I have known since I think the third grade called me and the way of course she put it to me is, hey, come over, I'm having a sex toy party, <laughs> um, which kind of freaked me out and I was really afraid to go by myself. So I took a girlfriend. Um, I'll never forget it. It was a Thursday night. I remember I walked in the door with the consultant looking at this girl going, who are you and what are you about to say to us? Like, I don't even know about this. And um I always say, you know, I drank a lot of wine and I spent a lot of money and I had a lot of fun and I was kind of hooked and I, bu I booked a party and uh, then booked another party the next year. So I was kind of a habitual hostess and that's kind of how I got hooked. I love it. So at what point did you decide, hey, I might want to be a consultant? Well, when I was doing my research, I was ready to sign up right away, but at the time I was a single mom on a very limited budget, and I'd also already tried Tupperware, Mary Kay, Leah Sophia party, like lots of money spent and no money gained, so I thought, all right, Andrea, grow up, you gotta be smart with your money. So I hosted a party, um, and we only had like five girls, or had a blast. Melissa Messenger actually came down to do my party, and uh, found out later that because of small attendance and she lives about two hours away, that she was gonna give up my party. Um, I'll tell you, she's so glad that she didn't. Um, but anyhow, I started that night with a $150 kit and uh, two years later I was able to quit that job. So you joined that very night? I joined that very night of my party. Wow. I was so excited. And I had no clue what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I can do this, yeah. Did you have a good idea before the party took place that you may join, or? Yeah, I thought I had wanted to do this because I'm just, I was always hungry for money and to be my own boss. Um, so I had that inkling, but limited budget, and there was a $150 kit special at the time, which was probably very similar to our basic kit right now. So not much in the kit, but it was all I could afford, and I loved Melissa, so signed that night. Hmm. All right, so Cindy, our Baptist girl, never had, had an <laughs> orgasm, was not up to having a vibrator. At what point were you like, yes, sign me up, I want to sell this? <laughs> well, um, the party that I hosted was in April of 2003, so it'll be 11 years um, oh April. So um, it was an $1,800 party, 
Um, and so I, obviously as the hostess, I got a lot of free stuff. Um, so I chose at the time what the the toy was called Decadent Indulgence. Uh, a lot of the old timers will remember that vibrator, <laughs> and uh, it was the most expensive vibrator in the catalog. So I thought, well, let's get one, and I know it's going to get her done and hopefully make me work because I didn't think I worked. Um, and it actually, I put the vibrator in the drawer for several years because I was too scared to use it, and um, I started reading. Really started. I started with Tickle Your Fancy, and I just started reading everything I could get my hands on because I realized that you know God had created this part of my body um, and was designed for for pleasure. And so I, I just started having like little epiphanies, and I started thinking, you know, I, I live here in the Bible Belt, and I was raised very sheltered, and and I'm like, I I, I know I'm not the only woman that probably has never had an orgasm. It feels like it. Um, and I really, really loved my consultant. So I just started, I, at the hospital, I was literally taking in the product line that we have now, which would, we always, always had Coochie, but things like Coochie and Body Do and Kiss, I, I was take all of those products into the hospital where I work and I would set them up on the side and let people come in and try them. And then I would sell them for the consultant. It was crazy. I'd go, she didn't ever have to leave her house. I'd go pick up the orders, make the deliveries, all this stuff. And um, finally, it was my sister who worked for another direct sale company at the time that said, you know, Cindy, why aren't you selling this? I'm like, I can't sell this mom and dad will a brick, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I can't do this. And she said, you know what, Cindy, we, there are, you're needed as a consultant, I'm sure for that company, just for the women that are in your market and in the Bible Belt. And, and so I just, I well, I'll just say that my, and I tell women this when they're thinking about the business, that my desire to do it was greater than my fear of not of, do, of, of doing it. So I had a stronger desire than my fear, and that's what I chose. And um, I went through a lot of adversity in the beginning, especially with my parents, and it was not easy, uh, but I really wanted to make a difference. And so that's how it ended up. So I I had my party in April, and then I purchased my kit the very end of July 2003. So it was a several-month process. So. Got it. Oh, what is so funny about that is you were actually selling before you officially became a consultant. But I didn't look at it that way. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize now, now that I know the signs of somebody, you know, but look back, I'm like, my God, I was the classic person. <laughs> And she never asked me. I mean, I went over to her house one day to get more products for the hospital, and I just looked at her, and I said, I think I want to do this. And she was like, oh, really? I just thought because your sister did another company, you would want to sign with her. I'm like, I don't want to sell kitchen products. <laughs> I'm like, white girl don't cook, you know? So it, it goes to show now for me that it you never know. It's always worth asking, you know? Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, Corinne. Um, so I'm like Andrea. It, it took me a little bit longer. I, I listened to her story, and I'm jealous. I wish I had jumped on the first party I went to. Um, but I think, um, like a lot of women, their fear kind of holds them back. And um, I never wanted to be that girl. And what I mean when I say that, I never wanted to be that girl that was bugging their friends for parties and, you know, Every time they saw me coming, oh, here she comes, she's going to ask for a party. That I think that was my biggest fear getting into this, but now I realize this stuff really sells itself. Like Cindy said, she just took it and showed it and they loved it. Um, so I went to my first party and then immediately that night booked a party because I'm like, well, I will definitely want to have this. So I booked a party and that was in October of 2005, I believe. Uh, and then I did another party in September of 2006 because I thought, well, this is going to be my annual thing because girls don't get together enough, you know, just to laugh and drink wine and have fun. And I was the girl, again, I didn't even realize it. And my, my consultant never asked me either. Um, like Cindy, I went to her going, hey, I think I want to do this maybe. Really sheepish. Like I just was very like, I don't know. And um, but I was the girl at the party that was selling everything for her. I was like saying how great everything was like, oh, and you need this and you need to get this and everybody needs to buy this. And um, then my husband and I were chatting one night, uh, one day we were, we were on our way home from a trip and um, we were talking about our finances and, you know, we were kind of living like rock stars or thought we were and then didn't really know how to pay it off. So 
I thought maybe I could do that pure romance thing. And that's kind of how I jumped into it. I went, I asked for, I asked for the information again, like Cindy and, um, the rest is history. I made a decision pretty quickly. Once I, once I looked at the info, I said, you know what? Never done sales before in my life, but I think I'm going to go for it. I think I'm going to try it. I love it. Um, do you, a little side question here. Do you feel like you do sales now? Um, yes and no. Um, like I said, I mean, women, this is a great thing about, about pure romance, in my opinion. Um, we're busy, we're women, we're multitaskers. A lot of us maybe have children or other responsibilities, and we can go to Target on a Saturday afternoon and we can get candles and home decor and pots and pans and cookware and, um, you know, any, anything I can imagine, you know, makeup, you can get all of that. But the thing is, is women want to buy our products. They just don't want to physically shop for them. So if you can provide that comfortable environment, you are selling it, but you're not selling it, if that makes sense. Like they want to buy it. They just don't want to physically go shop for it. So if you can say, hey, come over, let's crack a bottle of wine, have some girl talk, have some fun. That's why it works, in my opinion. So you're unaware of any of your friends or family being like, oh, here Karen comes, she's going to try to sell us something. Well, the interesting thing that happened <laughs> was they started coming to me ah. because they saw how much fun I was having and they saw how much success I was having. And they're like, huh, well, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should see what this whole thing is about, you know, <laughs> because women want to be like other women. They want to be like most women. So they started coming to me. I love it. Um, all right. So you all purchased a kit. Where did those first few parties come from? How did you get rolling, Andrea? I was fortunate enough to uh, actually get a party lead because I was one of those girls who my friends and families were not great supporters. Um, they just wouldn't host a party for me. So luckily enough, I got that first party lead and then it really just started from there. I did a booking game. I think I booked one or two parties. Then it snowballed. So when we tell you ladies that your business will snowball with bookings, it is so true because I wouldn't be here today if that hadn't happened. But it sounds like you didn't have a ton of parties booked. You just had a few in the beginning, right? I did, but then one after another, after another. And it was okay because when I first started, this was like a part-time gig just for fun, to make some extra money. And then it was funny how that one party booked one or two parties and then booked another one or two. And before I knew it, like my calendar was doing six or ten parties a month. Um, and then it was like, okay, well, I really can make money at this. What can Pyramids really do for me? Cindy, how about you? How'd you get rolling? Um, well, my sister that pushed me into this business, <laughs> I think she just wanted the product herself. <laughs> uh, she hosted my very first party, and um, I'll just say I was extremely nervous. And um, but she she got so many people there. I just you know she was amazing, and I I think I booked like at least four parties off of that first party, and um, it just got rolling. I think I had other couple other ones booked at the beginning too but my sister she booked the first one and so it like Andrea said the the snowball effect is is really there if you you've still got to ask mm -hmm. you know it doesn't just happen you know you still have to ask in the shopping room but um, yeah my sister did my first one and, and my first party was a thirteen hundred dollar party and yeah so it just um, I bought the silver kit, which back then was five hundred dollars, and we didn't have kit sales back then. And um, I, I sold my, I, I had a hot tub and sold it to get my kit money, and bought my kit, and I recouped my initial investment my first night. Aw, instead of bye bye bills, you had bye bye hot tub. Bye bye hot tub. <laughs> but have you but, missed that hot tub since? Oh God, no. What? You know, I was it was me and my ex husbands, and I was going through the I was going through my divorce literally um, when I when I started the business. Like I was I was Cindy Barnes when I started the business, and uh, and two months later my divorce was final, and it was back to Cindy Faulkner. So, you know, that was a hot tub with him. I didn't want you know I was like. Bye bye and hello. <laughs> You're like bye bye hot tub. <laughs> hello for <pure> romance. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, Corinne, so your first few parties, how they roll in? 
Well, my first party um, was I was fortunate enough. My consultant that I signed with uh, was overbooked and she couldn't do the party. So she called me and said, hey, do you want to do this party? And I said, absolutely. Um, and like the other ladies were saying, you know, it did kind of snowball. I remember I did play booking games from day one. I played uh, Pop Your Cherry. And I played that game for probably the first six months to a year of my business. And it changed the face of my business. I mean, it, it really did. So just kind of kept swallowing. And I remember I got another party because I signed at the very end of the year. I signed it in, at the very end of October of 2006. So I remember um, I picked up a party from what we now probably call the community. I think they were called the forums back then, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And I saw a girl post another party lead. So I was just all over it in every way I could get, um, just really hungry for it. And my sponsor at the time had just had a baby. So she was kind of unavailable to me. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to dive in. Like, if I can't get help this way, I'm going to get help some way or another. I'm going to help myself. And I remember I just dove in to those forums and just absorbed every bit of information that I could. So, you know, it was just a snowball effect like the other ladies and I talked about it. You know, I went out and I talked about it. I remember before Pure Romance, um, I used to go out every Friday night and have Mexican with friends and um, I remember I talked to somebody and Cindy, she was worked at the hospital, she was a nurse, and this medical field, they are great party throwers for sure. Um, and I talked to this woman and then months and months later, I got this call and this woman, oh, I got your card from so-and-so, and I had no idea who it was, and I traced it back to the lady I gave it to at Mexican, and it was, I think, a $2,200 party. It was my $2,300 party. It was my high party to date at that time, and because I just gave my card to someone out at my local Mexican restaurant. Hmm. So, Corinne, were you still working your job when you started Pure Romance? Yes. You were. Yes. You were. Mm -hmm. Still working um, full-time. When did you decide Pure Romance was going to become your full-time? Or did you decide? <laughs> I did not decide. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit of a square, and <laughs> to take that leap of faith, it was really scary for me. So I got kind of booted out. Um, I was actually laid off from my job in November of 2008, almost two years to the day of me signing. It was like two years and a week um, of me signing up and becoming a consultant. So. Um, I was just kind of pushed out and it was very scary. Um, I had a five month old at home at the time when I got laid off from my job. So I walked out with my box of six years working for this company, crying, calling my husband saying, I've just lost my job. What are we going to do? We have a five month old. And, you know, he said, we're going to be all right. And I tried my best to believe him at the time. <laughs> um, and, you know, sure enough, we, we were, um, we are, but I, I decided, you know what? I have this little five month old and I don't want to miss any of this and I don't want to work for anybody else and I don't want to update my resume and I don't want to apply for a job because if anybody remembers the economy in 2008 it was a little rough <laughs> and I decided to take that leap of faith and go full time and I can tell you one thing I'm really fortunate about well there's a lot of things I'm fortunate about but I really worked hard the first two years of my business when it came to sponsoring because I saw the benefit for the longevity of ultimate wealth with that. And I'm so thankful that I just really, really hit it hard and sponsored and worked to get women trained and on my team. So I wasn't in complete dire straits. I mean, getting very scary, but I'm glad that it all worked out that way. So a, a kind of what would have been an unfortunate or negative situation was actually a gift in the end. Oh my gosh, yeah. I say it all the time at my party, like getting let go from my job was one of the biggest blessings ever because it really pushed me to do what I love and what I'm passionate about even bigger and better. Love it. Okay, so Andrea, how did you learn to do those first few parties? Where, how did you learn so much about sexual health and the product line? Oh my gosh. Well, we did not have the training that we do have now. Um, that's for sure. And my first party, I like, I can do this. I've sold other stuff. This won't be a problem. Went out to my party and, uh, went to go start demoing the product on the customer. So, you know, sensations, those kinds of things. And I still had all the seals on everything. <laughs> like, uh oh, uh, good news, I did have batteries in the toy. So I had plans for that, but you know, I hadn't even prepared any of that. But um, 
great mentor in Melissa Messenger. I think at the time she actually had her entire demo typed out. So I just read and reread her demo, watched that, um, just learned my product. Really also use the catalog because keep in mind I had a smaller kit. So I learned that I didn't have to have the product on my table in order to sell something. My goal was to every party make some profit, add stuff to my demo table as I went. So really it's amazing how if you just talk about something in the book that you can sell it as well. So it was definitely a learning curve um, and obvious by my party sales which I'm sure were low when I first started and then as it grew in the business those party sales definitely grew with me. So you were still working your other job, you didn't particularly love it when you were doing pure romance? Right. What I did love about my job though was that I could do a lot of pure romance work at work. So that was nice um, to get a lot of that stuff done. So I liked my job, but I liked pure romance that much better. At what point did you take that leap of faith and say, I'm going pure romance full time? Well, I had a goal because being a single mom, I wanted to make sure that all my ducks were in a row before um, I quit that job. So my goal was to make sure that my override could pay my rent. And at the time, my rent was $850. So like Corinne, I really saw the magic in sponsoring and amazing how just building your team built that additional paycheck and that ultimate wealth. Um, so I was able to quit two years after I started. I did quit in July which at the time I thought would be great to spend the summer off with my daughter um, but freaked out a little bit because I had the comfort of two incomes and then July happened and I wasn't as busy so uh, for those girls on my team who decide to go full-time I do encourage them to quit during a busier season so they don't have to stress out like I did but it was so worth it I would never go back Got it. so Cindy you've got to still be a nurse right <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> What's the matter? You didn't like all those hours or something? Right. Oh, when, no. did, when did you make the switch and you kind of moved away from nursing and started with Pure Romance full time? Um, well, I started the business in August of 2003. About a year into my business, I went to my boss and said, may I go part time? So I was averaging, when I was still working full time at the hospital, I was averaging one to two parties a week. And then um, I figured if I did part time at the hospital, I would do two. I bumped it up to two to three parties a week, and started doing that. And then a year later it was October two thousand five to two years and two months, is and that's when I left the hospital and I was doing three to four parties a week. Um, and it was like Andrea was when my override was basically. Um, pay my my mortgage, which was around seven hundred fifty dollars, and um, um, I think my overrides at that time. I was a senior director, were averaging around eight hundred dollars a month, and that's when I left nursing, and and I um, could not do work at the hospital for Pure Romance, but I was doing it anyway, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you were no one liked me, so I'm not proud of that. But that's when I just knew. I mean, that's I mean every waking moment that I was there during my shift was thinking about who I could be calling, what I could be doing. And so I literally within six months of leaving the hospital, I left in October and promoted to national director in March. Wow. So, I mean, I just got home and pff, yeah. Just did it. So you left that original purchase in your drawer for a long time before you ever used it. A few, well, a few months. A few yeah. months, okay. Um, that seems like a long time when you purchase something like that. Um, well, now it does to me. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, so I would imagine getting up in front of women in the beginning must have been intimidating, but now knowing the type of presentation you do, I don't think anybody could imagine that you are uncomfortable talking about sexuality. How did you learn what you know? Um, in the beginning, I'll be real honest, because when I, I, I t already mentioned I started reading everything I could get my hands on, but I, at that time I was reading it just for Cindy because it, it's information that I needed. And so when I joined the business, I just continued that. Um, and of course I read all of the books that we had on hand at that time, which were still all Sadie Allison books. And then I just started getting recommendations from other people of how can I increase my sexual health knowledge and I I just kept reading um, 
And looking back is the best thing, number one, that I did for myself personally. And number two, the best thing that I ever did for my business was not just not just settle for the information that's right in front of me, but go ahead and expand my knowledge. And it wasn't like I went home and highlighted and said, I want to say this at my party because I was really reading and taking it in. That information just started coming out and started just being a part of what I shared at my parties and really made a difference for why women wanted to continue to book with me. All right, so let's shift gears. Let's talk about money a bit, because um, it's been a long time since all of your first parties. Um, what would you say to somebody who's like, uh, you know what, you guys are special. Most people really don't make money doing direct sales. What would you oh, say? gosh. Well, I would say, you know what, the product, first off, sells itself. So even if you are not a confident presenter, I'll teach you how to do all that. The product is definitely going to sell itself. And let's face it, we get paid the night of the party. That is what's so special about Pure Romance. So if you need to pay an extra bill, cell phone, car payment, whatever, just book a party because you're going to make money that night. It's, it's amazing. And I come from some very old school German relatives who uh, don't understand that if you don't go to work and get a paycheck every two weeks or every week, how are you going to get paid? Um, so definitely a lot of naysayers around me. Um, to this day, now that I've become so successful, still don't get it. My grandma and grandpa, in fact, say this is monkey business and <laughs> don't understand why the economy is bad and people have money for all this monkey business. Um, but they see where where I started and where uh, what I've come to. So, yeah. Um, so we know that you make money by going out there and holding your personal parties, but do you mind sharing what your general overrides are? Yeah, my overrides will vary because we have a growing team, so they range usually between $3,500 to $6,500 a month, which is sweet. <laughs> very, very nice money. Very nice. So that might quiet the naysayers down a bit there. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Just bought a new car, and Grandpa had to come out and check it out. And uh, I got a Lexus, so so excited about that because one of my dream cars. And yes. uh, he's like, and his funny. He likes to talk with a funny accent, even though he already has a German accent. And he's like, well, this is Lexus because it's luxurious. I'm like, yes, Grandpa, thank you. So, so sweet. <laughs> nice choice. Nice yes. choice. All right, Cindy. What would you say to somebody who's like, you know what, Cindy's special. Other people just don't really make money at this business. Um, <laughs> well, you know me, I'd probably have something real smarty pants to say, <laughs> to say back, but I would just say, you know, for me, it's really all about, um, what you choose to believe about yourself in life and accomplishing things. And it's, you know, I, I've just, you know, I look at myself and I look at so many women on my team that have just decided that it come, it has to come from a, a really a need or a desire in your life for wanting more. So, you know, I would ask them, do you, are you content with where you are? Do you want to stay here? Do you want more? And if they say yes, okay, so what are you willing to do to get it? And, and if you're willing to work hard, you're not going to be alone. You get, you get to team up with me and a strong network of sisters in this company and locally. So it's just really a matter of no right or wrong, but if you want more, you can have it. And that's really all I did. The, the only, I, there's nothing special to me other than that I chose, I, 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 I chose faith over fear. And then I it kept choosing day in and day out to work my business. And so it, it, the only, the thing that sets uh, us apart, the, meaning the women on this call versus any other consultant is the choices that we're making on a daily basis. So, you know, you get, you get to choose and you have the same opportunity as I did, and I'd love to be on this journey with you and and support you and you know cheer for you and encourage you in what whatever your dreams and desires are. So, so give me one of your highest overrides. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was I think my highest override was a little over thirteen thousand. Hmm. So yeah, I don't think you were probably making that at the hospital. <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> and we should say thirteen thousand in what time frame? A month. A month. Thirteen thousand in a month. Yeah, yeah. Oh, love it! I love it. Corinne, what would you say to the naysayers? Like, you know what? You really just can't make money in this business. 
well, I'll keep clean, but no. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, my initial is just like, you're crazy, but that's what I would say. Um, I, I think Cindy kind of took the words out of my mouth because the whole time she was talking, like, to me, it is all about the choices that you make because, you know, I always tell girls the only thing that separates, you know, me from someone that I meet, whether it's a consultant already or somebody wanting to be a consultant, the only thing that separates us is I have a little bit more experience. That's it. I mean, you you can choose to be and do and all this because I have seen women in this business that you never think are going to do what you think, what they end up doing. And you sit back and look at them and go, oh my gosh. And one of my favorite things when it comes to sponsoring is when I see a girl and what I call it is get bit by the bug. When they get bit by the pyramid bug and you see it just change and transform and you see you, you just, something takes over. And that's, I don't know how to other explain it then. They get bit by the pyramid bug and I love that. Because then I, I feel like, then I can celebrate with them and go, see, look, it, it can work and it does work. And I say to women at my parties who, you know, look at it and a lot of, a lot of women look at our company and they associate it with a pyramid scheme. And I'm, I'm like, first of all, when there's no scheme here. I'm supporting my entire family, you know. Um, I've done it, you know, my husband works as well, but I've done it during times for a year and a half where I supported all four of us, uh, pregnant half the time. And with a newborn the other half of the time and pure romance was our constant. And so it's no scheme. I'm, it's, I'm living, breathing proof that it's not. And, you know, I always turn it back to girls too, where if someone at the party says, Oh, it's, is this a pyramid? And can we really, we, you got in early and we can't do that. And I'm like, and I'll ask them and I'll say, okay, what do you do? And she'll go, Oh, I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm like, okay, you're a teacher. So is there someone at the top making more than you? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so is the principal making more than you are? <laughs> and are you making more than the para pro? You know what I mean? It's like, and what shape is that? Because there's one principal, <laughs> and then there's some assistant principals, and then there's teachers, and then there's para pros, and then there's students, and then there's, you know, I mean, it's like, what does that do? You know? And so people get it. They go, oh, yeah. Like the Girl Scouts, churches, pastors make more than everybody else. I mean, the government. Well. <laughs> I told you I was going to keep it clean, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, so that's kind of what I tell girls. It's like, there's no scheme here. You can do it. I mean, it's possible if you choose to want it and if you want to work hard, play hard, because it is a job. I'm not going to lie. It is a job. But I say this too all the time. I'm like, you know, I would rather take any tough day in pure romance than have to go back to corporate America again. Mm. I would take any hard day in pure romance mm-hmm. than have to go back to corporate America. Mm-hmm. So it looks like you have a diploma hanging on your wall <laughs> behind you. You're not going to go back to that, are you? No. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty piece of paper. <laughs> um, it's a pretty piece of paper. And I'm sure my parents are very proud that it's hanging there. <laughs> um, you know, I... I it's it, it helps out when I when I need it to. I have a graphic design degree, so I can make really pretty pure romance things. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm glad I have the skill, but you know, yeah. it that's not it didn't get me it didn't get me here. That's for sure. Uh, you know, I always say all of the education that we pick up in the past service serves us in the future in mm-hmm. some way. Yeah, um, because that is a journey, and that is who how we get shaped. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I never say, you know what, that, that diploma is serving you in some way, mm-hmm. uh, but it doesn't sound like you're like, you know what, I want to go back to doing exactly what that degree says I should be doing. I can tell you I'm making more now than I would be working for a graphic design firm, and I'm, I can tell you I'm making more now, way more now than I did when I was working my corporate job. So. So what do you make now? Can you give us, what were one of your highest overrides? Well, I just did my taxes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I always, I share this at my party. Well, my highest override uh, that has ever been uh, in one month was 8,000. Nice. Um, And I share this at my parties because women want to generally go, how much do you make? They don't want to ask, but they want to know. 
so I can tell people uh, the first my first year in the business, my first full year in the business, which was 2007. I made over 41,000 doing it part time my first year, um, and I now make over six figures. So nice, good, nice. good times. <laughs> I love it. All right. So you shared, uh, you know, just a touch financially of what you've been able to do with the business. Um, what are some of the other benefits? How have you seen life change for yourself since becoming a consultant? Well, first off, I want to say, I don't know about you guys, but I just have the warm fuzzies over here from this, from connecting with you and hearing your stories. And I just, I can feel the goosebumps up and down my arms. Um, but life has been like night and day that has changed. I can really say what hasn't changed. When I started, I was a single mom on a limited budget and I was pinching pennies. Um, I was making sure that my daughter was going to private school. I had a car payment, had rent, was doing everything but pinching those pennies. And probably one of the biggest things is that now uh, we can go shopping and my daughter Morgan can get whatever she wants. And I am I can do that for her. Um, I don't have to pinch those pennies when we go to the grocery store or Target. You know, every time you walk into Target, they get you for $100. And that used to be a really big deal. And I was like, oh, not a big deal. Um, and the best thing is it's paid for in cash. So do I have credit cards? Yes. Do I use them? Yes. But they get paid off in full every month. And if it weren't for Pure Romance, I don't think I'd be able to do that. The other thing that's really changed is just personally, I have grown in so so many ways um, that I know had I stayed in the corporate world I would have been very stagnant um, so just becoming a more confident woman um, having the opportunity to just connect with so many women uh, has really touched my life in amazing amazing ways Cindy has life look different now or do you got a few hours yeah. <laughs> um, I'll I'll start, well, just looking back at my job, you know, I was at the hospital, I was going through a divorce, I wanted to keep my home, and so this Pure Romance really became, you know, a way for me to be able to supplement my income, continue to keep my home, pay all my bills, and then it, and then it transitioned into, I can quit, and it's going to continue to pay my bills, stay in my home, and do all that stuff, and then it, you know, just continued to grow. Um, um, I'm, you know, still single. I'm not, I haven't remarried. I, ha I don't have any children. Um, and so I, choices, it's just given me choices. I can pretty much do what I want when I want. Um, and I have just been, and this is not to, to brag on myself, but it has been a true pleasure for me to be able to do for others when I want, um, whether they know I'm doing it for them or not. Um, you know, I don't have kids, so I love spoiling my nieces and nephews, um, and spoiling Corinne's little girl <laughs> and, you know, just the other kids that come into my life. I was just in Florida, um, the end of February, beginning of March and my sister, my baby sister lives down there and we took the kids out one night and I said, all right, we went to a big shopping center. I said, all right, each of you pick your favorite store and we're going to go in there and get what you want. And it just you know, ugh, try to cry. Um, just to be able to do that and know that it probably means more to their mom. You know, my <laughs> mom's a teacher and her husband's self-employed to be able to do that for them, um, to be able to pay it forward to women on my team, um, financially and otherwise. I, you know, I, when Andrea was talking, I was thinking that, you know, when we think about our personal growth and personal development and, and, you know, your confidence, I'm just not the same woman. This business helped me to figure out who the heck I was and find and find myself and know what I'm deserving of and worthy of. And that's not an easy journey to be on. But most people are not on a journey that we're on. Um, they're not on a journey of self-improvement. They go in day in, day out, clock in and clock out. They're around negative people that hate their job. And we are constantly surrounded by women that are ready to build us up. And I get to do that for other people. And um, all I got to do is reach out if I need somebody. Um, and then I hope when my girls reach out to me and, and friends, it's just changed every facet of my life. Um, and I'm, uh, I could keep going, but I'm just, I'm blessed. And the future is very bright um, in many, many ways. I love it. Corinne, how's life look different now? 
Um, like the other two ladies said, you know, totally different. Um, and I'll start with actually the, the growth part of it because um, I never thought I would grow as a person the way I have um, with <laughs> this, with, I see Cindy nodding. <laughs> I, I coach with Cindy, so she's seen my progression for sure and been a huge part of it. Um, but it's, it's so funny because in so many ways I'm a, such a stronger person, but I'm a softer person. <laughs> so, um, that's, I, I mean, for those that don't, <laughs> for those that don't know me, um, may not get that, but I'm, I'm, I'm a stronger person, but I'm a softer person. And, um, this, I, I say pure romance will will teach you things if you if you allow it you have to be open to it and you have to let it happen and, and be willing to let it happen but parents will teach you things that you never never will get in a corporate environment as far as um, you just you just I'm sorry I'm stumbling over my words but you just you won't get it in another environment like like the lady said you go in day in day out you're around negative people you clock in you clock out and um, it's just it's completely changed that way and I know my journey's not over, so because I, I just continually, you know, when you you get that feeling when you get pushed and you're like, okay, I should do this, but I don't want to do it, but okay, I'm gonna do it because I know I need to do it, you know. Um, that's kind of stuff that I don't think you're really provided in a corporate setting. Um, and as far as financially, um, you know, my husband and I were sitting in this in the same office that I'm sitting in right now back in December, and. We just had this, like, it just kind of flowed out of me. It was flowing out of me. And I was like, you know, I look at him and I said, we are so blessed. We, I feel like we are so blessed because I'm in my 30s. And we don't, I don't, I, we don't have the same, a lot of the same stresses that I think a lot of people in my life have financially. By no means are we, you know, everything's perfect. And I mean, we have our issues just like everybody else. But financially it goes... I have hope all the time, I guess. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Like, I have hope all the time. I know there's always more around the corner, and I know there's no glass ceiling. Um, you know, I've been I, I've been struggling with my why a little bit, and, you know, we always say, as Cindy says, when you have a strong why, your how is always possible, and in this business, you have to have a, a good why. But, you know, I'm now coming through that because I achieved a why. I purchased a new home in November. And I, I hit my why, so now I'm like, okay, what's next? And I've taken the last couple months, and I've really thought about it, and now I'm, I'm excited for the future, and I'm excited for what's next because I've decided what's next. So um, I, I guess that I have hope that I can achieve it. You know, there's nobody telling me I can't. And like, like Andrea, you know, I, I drive a nice car that starts with an L, and I love it. <laughs> I just drive a Ford. <laughs> yeah, but you get a really cool car. You don't have What's just up with that. Yeah, you don't have just like a Ford Escort. You got a really cool <laughs> Ford. <laughs> you do. I, I was just in it. I just. I love my car. Go ahead. <laughs> and, it, and you know, it's almost paid off. You know, it's almost paid off. And I don't know. I could go on. Like Cindy said, how long do you have? Because I could just, I could just keep going on and on and on about the personal benefits, the financial benefits how it's changed my life because I don't know even know if I said this at the beginning I got into this business to pay off credit card debt that's why I got into this and I paid off fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt in about three years um, so and that I never thought would happen because anybody that has credit card debt or any kind of debt it weighs your life down and you feel like there's no hope from getting out from underneath of it and now I feel like all I have is hope financially I can look 15 down years down the road and get excited. <laughs> I know, right? That's great. <laughs> oh, awesome. I, I, now I get the warm fuzzies. Uh, all right. Goodbye, Let's start singing. Unhold hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the virtual. <laughs> There's the bonfire in the sports. I need my lighter, right? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, um, Andrea, let's let's talk about what it's like working with your team. Oh my gosh, uh, well, I'm blessed when it comes to my team. Uh, but let me first start by saying 
I was the girl growing up who did not have a lot of girlfriends, <laughs> okay? So uh, when I started to come to sponsoring, I'm like, well, I like making money from the parties. I don't know if I want to sponsor because, you know, women <laughs> can kind of be that B word, right? Can kind of be catty, and I didn't know if I wanted to get into all of that. Um, but I just went in full force and kind of won, uh, just like with my booking parties, the sponsoring one snowballed after another, after another. And today I wouldn't change anything for this world because the girls on my team truly love each and every one. They are so supportive. There is such a sisterhood there that you're not going to find that anywhere else out there. Um, so from going from just a couple close girlfriends to I have hundreds of close girlfriends. Um, they're amazing. And we just did something recently because we have this huge growth with all these kids specials and we have big sisters on our team. And so I assigned little sisters to the girls who've been in the business a little bit and they just took them in under their wings. The little sisters loved having additional support besides just their sponsors, something that they could ask for questions. And uh, they're begging me for more little sisters now. They just want to continue this process. So it is something that's so very, very special. That's cool. Cindy, what's it like working with your team? Hmm. Um, well, shout out to Team Golden Girls. <laughs> woo, woo. Um, you know, like I mentioned, the I don't have kids, so these girls are my, they're my, they're my kids, you know. Um, it's the closest thing I think it would be to be a mother. Uh, You've seen uh, some women really change who they are as a result of this business. And that goes way beyond any financial gain or um, that fills you up personally more, I think, than anything else can. It's been, um, like women say, motherhood is hard. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we, you know, there's no need to sugarcoat. We're all sitting here pie in the sky with this stuff and say that this isn't the hardest part of my business. Um, because when you're, when you're working with, with women that are overcoming things and have their own struggles and their own insecurities and, and you, you see so much more for them sometimes than they ever see for themselves. Um, you know, it requires a lot of patience and understanding and um, thankful for God's grace and the wisdom that he gives me sometimes well, a lot to be able to know whether or not I need to just sit back and this is their part of the journey they've got to figure out or to step in. And it is, it requires, and that's the part of the push and pull on this struggle, like Corinne mentioned earlier, that you always have to be willing to be open and present and willing to learn and sometimes own when you've messed up. But, um, you know, my girls are, they're everything to me. Uh, I've had to learn, uh, what it means to create boundaries and, and have healthy boundaries in my relationships with my girls. Um, and really just know that at the end of the day, my job is for them to, um, not necessarily like me, um, but to know that I've been put into their life to serve a certain purpose. Um, and, and, um, I hope they love me and like me. I think they do. But at the end of the day, I want them to know that when they come to me, they're going to get the truth and love. Um, it may not always be easy, but that, that, that's, that's what that they can count on from me. Um, but I'm just super proud of them. And, um, you know, my first recruit came at my sixth party. I'll never forget it. I was, Back, back in the day when our parties lasted forever and I, you know, had a break between the liquid line and the toys and, <laughs> you know, it was 20, 25 minutes wasted. <laughs> and um, a girl just came up to me and she's like, I want to do this. And I'm like, okay, right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and, you know, that's what, what started, you know, my sponsoring journey. So I, you know, I started recruiting very quickly and I'm very, very glad that I did. Corinne, your team, what's it like they, working with them? They are awesome. They're an unbelievable group of women. Um, like all the ladies said, I've formed some great friendships. Um, this is probably the area I've experienced the most growth um, is leadership because most women getting into this business don't get in to go, hey, I'm going to lead a team, you know. You just get into it, pay off, pay off some debt, you know. <laughs> and then it turns, it, it, it snowballs like party schedules do. 
sponsoring can snowball and you end up in this position where everybody looks at you like you're they, they put you up here and you're like hey I'm just like you I what do you mean you know um so it's it's, it's been the most area of growth for me I'm very blessed to have them as a team because like I said amazing group of girls but like Cindy said it's kind of like parenting it's the hardest thing you'll ever love I like that <laughs> that's um, good that's, that's what I say about parenting and leadership it's the hardest thing you'll ever love and um, I think we have something really unique and it, I mean listening to these women they I know they have wonderful teams too and I feel like all three of us have something really unique because I can't speak 100% for their teams but I can say for mine like we don't have a lot of drama have we ever had drama sure we're women but we don't have a ton of drama we really have a spirit for each other that wants to help and wants success for everybody. Um, you know, I, one, I just don't tolerate it. I don't, I don't tolerate the drama. I don't tolerate the competitiveness because you know what? I mean, I live in Atlanta. It doesn't matter where you live, but I live in Atlanta. We have over 5 million people in this city, ladies. I think there's enough to go around, you know, and, <laughs> and we're still growing, you know? Um, so we just don't tolerate the kind of the catty and the petty and the, and the jealousy and, and none of that really, you know, um, happens. Like I said, there's been drama in the past, but it's a fleeting thing. It's like, we talk about it, let's get it out and let's be done with it. And let's keep making money, having fun, work hard, play hard. So, um, you know, like Cindy said too, it just, you see so much in these girls and you want so much for them. And, and like I said earlier, Cindy's my coach. So she's been on Skype calls for me where I'm crying for my girls because I want, I want more for them, but it has to come from them, you know, and you have to step back. Like she said, sometimes and be patient, but that's a, that's a good lesson for me because patience is not my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a growing process for them. It's a growing process for me. And I know it's just going to keep getting bigger and better as long as I stay consistent and the team stays motivated and positive. It's just going to keep getting better. Um, Andrea, with the experience that you've had with Pure Romance, do you have any words of advice for somebody that's looking at the business opportunity? Oh, well, someone, well, actually one of my team members, shared this with me the other day and I just thought it was it so hit the point. You can have courage or comfort. You can't have both. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so true. So you can have courage or comfort, can't have both. So just do it, ladies, because what's the worst thing that can happen? You have a box of toys, right? That's the absolute worst thing that can happen. And with our support system, you're in business for yourself, but you are never, ever, ever alone. Um, so just try it out. Cindy, words of advice? Well, I'm going to just you know, segue right off of Andrea here. And I love courage versus comfort. I just wrote that down. Uh, I always say f faith versus fear. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it really is, it's just a matter of choosing and deciding, you know, if, if I'm, my desire to do this is really greater than my fear, <clears throat> you know, take the leap, no risk, no reward, go out on a limb. That's where all the fruit is. You know, I mean, I can give the quotes all day long. Um, but it really is, be, be, you, you know, you can't go wrong. Either way, if you, if you, if you, join the, you join Pure Romance, it doesn't end up working out long term. There's always a reason and a season. And it will add to your life. Even if you're not a lifer for, with Pure Romance, it's going to add something to your life. You're going to learn something new. You're going to meet new people. You're going to have fun. There's not a negative thing that can come from this, even if you don't if you don't end up being long term with your romance. But why not give it a try and just see how it can add to your life and what you're going to be how you're going to be able to add to other people's lives. <clears throat> Corinne, words of advice? Just do it. <laughs> just do it. No. Um, I wish I had done it so much sooner than I did. But like Cindy said, there's a season for everything and there's a reason. And there was a reason I didn't get started when I did. But I, looking back, I wish I had done it the moment, like Andrea, at her first party. I wish I had. Um, but I love what Andrea said. Like, what's the worst that can happen? You got a box of toys. Like, like if you simplify it and look at it that way, like, seriously, you have a box of fun stuff. And just go for it and try it. Because, yeah, your fear could hold you back. 
and you could not do anything, but then you'll never know. Yeah. You'll never know. Like mm -hmm. what if, you know, what if you don't succeed? Well, then you got to back the toys, but what if you do, mm -hmm. you could be really good at it and get out of your comfort zone and make some money, have some fun, make lifelong friends. These are all these positives. The negative is I'd have a box of toys and I wouldn't, wouldn't do it anymore. Um, so I understand the fear of it. I was fearful as well, but I'm so glad that I chose, chose to go after what I want. And I chose actually myself. I chose myself and my financial freedom over my fear mm -hmm. because Think about going through life when you let your fear control you the whole time. And that's just no way to live. YOLO. <laughs> Deuces. YOLO. <laughs> All right, Andrea, let's pull out the crystal ball. What does the future look like? Oh, you know, it's, it's good, real good. I'm just excited to continuing to share the opportunity with other women and help change their lives. I love looking for the diamonds in the rough um, because those girls who just need pyramids, you never know how pyramids can really change them. And uh, financially, it just keeps getting bigger and better. But one of the biggest things is now that I'm in a position to really pay it forward and give back, which is something that I just love to do. And it's amazing how when you give back, just really good things continue to happen to you. So, yeah. Cool. Cindy, the future. The future. Hmm. I was at a party last night and, and was talking to people and the joke came up about how long I've been doing this and how long I'll be doing it. I'll be like, y'all be wheeling me in in a wheelchair <laughs> doing these parties. I'll be like, this is a ton of fun, you know. <laughs> and then I said, I'll probably be like ha half out, out of the casket holding out one more time going, this is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's in me. And um, as far as the 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 future doing that, but what it's going to bring me, and this is um, um, me stating out loud what my intentions are and my goals, um, is I, I want to build my dream home um, on a lake, right on the water, with a boat and fun a place for my little doggy to run, but for my team to come and have fun and. Um, and friends, everybody's invited. I'll be there. I'll be there. So, you know, I've already got a lot of things, you know, up in here of what I want. And so that's, you know, that's that's my focus right now. And that's what my future looks like. And it's important for me to say it out loud and be accountable. And um, But that's my future. I'm excited. Corinne, your future. Well, I mean, the word that just comes to mind is hope, like I was saying earlier. Um, but kind of uh <laughs> kind of like Cindy I'm, I'm, it's 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 nerve-wracking to kind of say um and it where you want to go because that fear is like oh my gosh what if I don't but um just recently I've decided that um I want to pay off my mortgage I just purchased my house in November but I want to pay off my mortgage early and it's not going to happen next year but um one of my big goals and why's uh, financially for my life is um, to own a vacation home. Um, either, at, at, you know, I thought it was a lake house, but I just went to Charleston this last weekend and man, it's a beautiful place there. Mm. So I don't know, I'm torn. Something on, a, on some, some sort of body of water because I have a vision and I know this is silly, but I feel like you have to put yourself in that place. You have to envision yourself there. And I have this vision of me 20 years down the road, 15 to 20 years down the road, sitting out on the back deck of whatever house over whatever body of water that I end up on with a glass of wine with my husband and having friends come in town or when my, my, I see my children coming home from college with their significant others or, you know, who they're dating and coming for the weekend. And I just have this vision of that. And I know that's going to happen. And I think, you know, if this is what I'm really serious about, I got to start working on it now. So I don't want two mortgages. So I'm going to start paying off this one and then start really dreaming about what I want for the future. And then as far as like personal growth for the future with me, um, you know, you ladies all know this, but you know, I'm really, I've recently started traveling and training with, you know, corporate and, and that's a, that's a huge other growth opportunity for me there. So I just see the future getting really exciting as far as giving back to other consultants and kind of sharing 
what I can to help other women grow their own businesses and just hopefully just share what they need at the time and, and having the having the knowledge to give that to them. And that's kind of where I want to go in that direction, not only to them, but my own girls and my own team and helping them and develop more leaders within my team. I just, I could keep going again. I could keep rambling, but I won't, <laughs> but hope to put some all up hope. The future for all of you looks very, very bright because we know with your leadership skills and what you've done with the business already, you've proven to yourself and to others what's possible. And there's lots of choices and lots of opportunities and that's an awesome future. Yeah. All right, I got, I got one bonus question for you, okay? If you could only pick <laughs> one thing, one thing, and you looked back, what something that you've purchased as a result of your pure romance business so far, what was the coolest thing that you ever purchased? Andrea? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, one thing. Oh, one thing. Um, it would have to be, and this sounds really material, but um, I was able to get, well, Kevin bought me, my fiance bought me a Louis Vuitton purse for my birthday. And I treated myself for my override that month and then bought the matching wallet, which, okay, I hope you're all sitting down. So just for a wallet was like $800. Um, so it was a splurge that something that I wouldn't look at Kevin's face. You know, yeah, some crazy splurge just for my override that Excuse me. I was able to do just because. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Cindy, one thing. You can only pick one thing. What was oh, one of the coolest gosh. purchases? Yeah. That was hard. <laughs> can I make it one of the purchases I'm most proud of? Okay. Because, I, I mean, do. it's it's cool, but it's more practical. <laughs> Because I came from a place of almost losing my house to being able to do about $30,000 in renovations, you know, that I paid cash for. You know, I've done a lot, a lot to my house and, and I'm just really proud that I did that and paid cash and it's done. So, you know, when I'm ready to sell this, I'm good to go. All right. Go in practical. No. Oh. I'd have to say gadgets, I, and true. I don't mean vibrators, ladies. Um, <laughs> if you don't know me, I I'm a I, I love iPads and phones and I headphones. I just bought myself a pair of headphones this last week. I waited and got half of the money for my birthday, and then got their four hundred dollar headphones. So when you see me in the airport. <laughs> Cindy, can I have your old, like, $200 ones? <laughs> I'll hook I you mean, up, boo-boo. I take, I take all her stuff. This is her phone case. <laughs> I, it's bad. When in doubt, accessorize. That's my motto. Uh, so I, I really should. I need to go through and just do, like, a big sale at my house and let people come over and give the money to PBF because it's bad news. Didn't Oprah do that? <laughs> Yeah, well, it would be on a much smaller scale. Oh, my God. But, uh, <laughs> We're going to go to Cindy's house, and she's going to be like, and you get an iPad, and you get an iPad, and you get an iPad, and you get an iPad. <laughs> Too funny. You know what? They say accessories just make the world prettier. They do, and they make me feel good, so there. there okay. Go. Corinne, pick one thing. Cool um, item you purchased. I think I'm going to have to go the most proud of, unless you want me to give an impractical, too, but... I think for me, I guess that was such a big life-changing thing for me. Maybe that's what I'm going to do, life-changing, was um, when I uh, was really fortunate enough, I think it was 2009, I think it was 2009, I can look up at the, I don't know, I got to look up at the award, but um, back then we had convention credits, and um, I was number one in the company for convention credits that year, and I got a $10,000 check, and uh, I paid off my final credit card debt like that was what it took to pay, pay off that last chunk so that was probably the most life-changing it's not a really frivolous one and I could have done a lot more with that ten thousand dollars but my goal getting into this was to be debt free and that was more important to me than anything because I needed to feel that security and that financial freedom so I know that's not really exciting but that I, that was that was why I got into this business I don't know. I'd be pretty excited with a ten thousand dollar check. Yeah, that was why I started this business. So, um, 
my I guess my most like impractical is I took my whole override check one time and I went to Napa Valley for a wine country weekend. Nice. <laughs> and they got pregnant like the next month. So thank God I did it then. But <laughs> I thought you were going to say you get pregnant on the Napa Valley trip. No. Nope. <laughs> I was not with my husband, so if that happened, that would not Ooh, be good. Yeah, she was with her boyfriend. That's a I whole nother good, Skype interview. A good girlfriend. <laughs> kidding. Uh, yeah, so I took my whole override check pretty much one year and uh, one month. It was for the month and went to Napa and wind it up, winded and timed it with a girlfriend and um, joined a wine club and take <laughs> Love me some cake bread. Oh, oh hell yeah. And uh, then I got pregnant the next month. So I had shipments of wine coming down my house and I couldn't drink any of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? A lot of wine ages well. So you, it was it's all good. I, I still have some aging. Mm -hmm. I'll I remember it. that. I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Cindy's like, next time I come, it's all Maybe good. I not said that to you. <laughs> you shouldn't have because I'll find that cake bread. <laughs> I love it. All right. It's a wrap, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. You're the coolest group to hang out with. Love well, it. you know. Uh, thank you. Know? you. I love it. You're welcome. <laughs>